I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Now, today we're reading from the Song of Solomon, chapter 7. Let's focus on verses 8 through 10. Now, this is the beloved speaking here. The fragrance of your breath like apples and the roof of your mouth like the best wine. Now the Shulamite speaking. The wine goes down smoothly for my beloved, moving gently past the lips of sleepers. I am my beloved's and his desire is toward me. Now as we're approaching third base here in chapter 7 of Solomon's song, the Song of Songs, And before our minds drift toward the next batter, who is a huge slugger, guy named Isaiah, a first-round draft pick in the prophets, perhaps we should pause and just recall how this relationship between the Shulamite and her beloved has grown from dating to marriage. Because we're almost at the end of this book, and I am halfway through yet another decade of marriage myself. And so I can't help but identify with the hope that's in this passage of a strong marriage that lasts a lifetime. Who, when they stand before the preacher and respond for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, who doesn't assume or at least hope for their marriage to be passionately devoted for a lifetime? You always say for better or for worse, but you think it's only going to get better. You always say for richer or poorer, but you think it's only going to get richer because that's the vital optimism that we need as young people in a marriage. And yet so few people stand the test of even seven years' time. Could it be that those two lovebirds have found the secret? That their love song could be atop God's best of all time playlist. It is the song of songs eternally on repeat on God's iPod. Well, God thinks so, and he separated it from even the Psalms. So while the Song of Solomon is poetic, it's actually written from the perspective of a historical literal, that is an observation of two actual people. And that is of utmost importance because it tells us that that relationship between two actual people that we're reading about is not just theoretical, only to be replicated in a laboratory under strictly controlled conditions. No, because it was two people, that means that it can be done. It is obtainable for any marriage. Now imagine overhearing an older couple talking to each other in this manner, the wine of their love only getting better with age. Well, I want that. Who doesn't? Well, then go for it. You see, marital love is supposed to be a forever thing. It is only distorted when the world entices us with hollow advertisements promising the thrill of a perverted and an unfaithful alternative. Consider this. What do your kids think about your marriage? By watching it. You see, faithful love is available for anyone who wants to receive it and to reciprocate. Of course, it is displayed best by Jesus, who is our bridegroom. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 32 and 33. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular, so his own, lo- so his own wife, Uh, So love his own wife as himself, and then let the wife see that she respects her husband. Hey, just as these two displayed the perfect kind of love for Solomon, now you guys go do that in your generation. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Now, Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And yes, we do need your monthly support. Donating is secure and it's easy at our website, groundworksministries.com. You know, there's another way to help us and that is to just tell people about Groundworks Ministries. Share these podcasts with friends and family and on your social media. And of course, you can always direct folks to our website, groundworksministries.com.